Hello. Hello, hello. I wanted to share a, uh, a review or my own personal review of a course that I just finished over in Udemy. And it's called Docker and Kubernetes, The Complete Guide. And it's by Stephen Greider. And um, I can't tell you enough about how good Stephen Greider's courses are. I do a lot of React development at work, as well as uh, like .NET and .NET Core. And Greider has several great React courses on Udemy. And when I saw that he had a Docker and Kubernetes course, I, had, I knew I had to go ahead and buy it just because he has enough Greiderisms that I like to call it, where uh, you know he teaches things and explains things in a certain way that just resonates well with me and others that I've spoken to feel pretty much the same way about him too. So uh, real quick background, um, I've got like an academic knowledge in Docker and Kubernetes. I've never really done that quote unquote on the job, you know, as paid experience, but I've been learning it pretty much on and off for the last uh, 11 months. Uh, I've taken several courses in Docker and several courses in Kubernetes, as well as in microservices through the various online training uh, websites and such. So before I even took this course, um, I actually had a, a fairly decent understanding. I want to say a, an academic beginner to immediate intermediate level of both Docker and Kubernetes, but I still went ahead and bought this course just because of the things that Steven Greider tends to teach in the way he does. So having said that, I just kind of like to briefly talk about the course itself. It's very ambitious. It's 21 hours of video, which plan on about six weeks, five to six weeks of your time if you're doing this off hours, basically after work in the evenings and or weekends. Usually one hour of video for me translates to about two to three hours of actual time going through it through the examples and such. What will you learn in this course? He'll give you a, a dive into Docker and he'll show you how, you know, how to use Docker, create Docker containers, how to use Docker Compose to bring up, a, you know, a full-blown Docker-based application over an overlay network with Docker networking. He'll actually uh, show you how to create and build images that you can upload into your own Docker Hub repository. And along the way, once you do that, he'll go ahead and uh, show you how you can use, and this part was really cool, show you how to use Travis Compute Continuous Integration. So Travis is an online service for continuous integration. Think of it kind of like as a uh, online version of Jenkins that you don't really have to install on-prem. So you can just basically create an account and it'll actually link up to your GitHub repos. And it'll watch for changes on your GitHub repos and it'll actually run instructions that you put inside of a script, which is known you know, as, Travis.yml. So he'll walk you through, you know, Travis.yml and, and creating these uh, scripts so that you can actually get your builds to run. So Travis is going to go ahead and watch your GitHub repo for changes, run your unit tests if you want to. It'll actually go ahead and uh, build images and push them out to your Docker repo or your Docker hub, if you will, um, to and you know, and then it'll go ahead and tie into AWS as well as Google Cloud, which will go ahead and, uh, you know, create deployments that pull from your Docker Hub. And, you know, lo and behold, at the end of the day, you'll be running an application, which this is what you're looking at. So that's another thing. What you're looking at is at the end of the day, when you take the course, um, it'll actually run this application using your own domain. So it's using HTTPS as well as uh, Let's Encrypt as its um, issuer. So, you know, he walks you through the steps right there on how to get Let's Encrypt, you know, to communicate back to your Kubernetes cluster so that you're communicating properly with your application over HTTPS. Do you have to know React for this course? Absolutely not. Um, you know, but he walks you through the application or he provides you with the actual code if you don't want to um, know React itself. So going forward, after he shows you how to uh, deploy the application to AWS through Elastic Beanstalk, um, you know, then he goes onwards to Kubernetes. And so he basically shows you how to use a 
program called Minikube, which allows you to run your local Kubernetes cluster on Windows and or Macintosh. And that's what you're looking at right here. So you can see I've got some pods already running um, via Minikube locally. Um, and he does that for quite a few modules. And you know, just to walk you through all the right uh, resource files and how to create Kubernetes deployments and services and all of that good stuff, as you can see right here. Um, you know, it's using a Postgres database, it's using Redis cluster, and it's using a front end um, for the React application. So he kind of breaks it out with microservices the right way, I feel, and he does a great job at it. And he, since the application is a fairly small one, um, you're not getting bogged down into a lot of the details on how the actual application works. All you need to know is that it's broken out into three different you know, three different services um, that he will deploy as uh, deployments inside of your Kubernetes cluster. And so going onwards with the course itself, um, you know, after he shows you how to deploy it to AWS and how to use Minikube to run your application locally, then he goes onward to Google Cloud. And um, what you end up, you know, what you're looking at right here is you end up deploying your application over to Google Cloud. And that's what you're looking at right here is, um, you know, he'll actually walk you through all of your services, um, you know, how to create your clusters, how to connect to your clusters. So I got three nodes right here. And what you're looking at right here is actually the application running on Google Cloud itself. Um, and just as proof of that, if you go to your services, you can see right here on the Ingress service, which by the way, he walks you through using Helm to install Nginx, uh, uh, like an Nginx, um, shall we say, process, which does redirection um, over in the Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, I've got my endpoints pointing right here. And, um, you know, so it, it, it's actually, these endpoints are actually referring to a load balancer for your ingress controller. So these are actually creating uh, full-blown um, Google Cloud load balancers, as you can see, um, you know, so we've got clusters for our Postgres stuff and our Redis stuff. He also walks you through creating secrets so that you can store your passwords, um, much like AWS secrets using KMS and all that. Um, Google Cloud has something very, very similar. So he'll walk you through those kinds of things. At the, at the time that this course came out, basically EKS wasn't really, quite mature and ready. So all you really had was cops and uh, some, you know, cryptic command line ways of communicating to your clusters in AWS. So that's why he chose Google Cloud as a means for deploying this application. And it was a very good decision on his part. And, you know, there's nothing at all wrong with um, learning Google Cloud. After all, they're the ones that uh, created an open source Kubernetes in the first place. So um, your clusters are running really fast there. And they have a nice interactive engine uh, command line right here where you can actually communicate to your cluster. Uh, granted, EKS has that too. But other than that, um, the other thing too is it's going to imply that you have a uh, um, you know, domain name. And so I use basically name silo for my domain name uh, service. And I just went ahead and logged into name silo. Now you can use any other ones he uses. Uh, I think he uses the uh, Google domain name service. But as you can see right here, um, you know, I can go ahead and manage my domain and tie, uh, let's see what we've got going on here. I don't want to get uh, um, bogged down into this part right here. So if I go to my home and go to the old site, manage my domains, and look at my A records. So I'm clicking on that. You can go to your DNS records your A records, and as you can see, I've got a couple of A records right there. These IP addresses basically tie to the IP address that I have here in the services right there, which are back end through the load balancer by this particular um, ingress service. So in AWS land, think of this somewhat almost like a Route 53 direction, which comes in here. So he'll show you how to um, to create all of that stuff up. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually walk through a real simple, you know, uh, example, just so you know that I'm, you know, actually went through the whole course itself. If you look at the title of this, it says Kubernetes Theron. What I'm gonna actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna go and just change this, uh, 
they like Kubernetes change this, just a kind of a, a wimpy little example right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and open up my command line and do a get dot status just so that you can see. I uh, made that change to that particular application. I'm gonna do a git add, git commit. Test deploy. And I'm gonna do a git push. So I'm basically taking that change to this application and I'm pushing it up to my own GitHub repo. And once that finishes, then in due time, this Travis CI uh, tool right here is gonna pick up the fact that I went ahead and changed my repository. And as you can see, it's picked up the change because it's turned yellow. And what it's actually doing at this time is it's, it's going ahead and running the commands that we have in our script file. So the long and short of it is um, when you're using Travis, you create a script file that actually goes through all these particular steps of um, you know, running all this all these commands on the cloud itself. So long and short of it is um, that particular change is going to uh, create um, you know, your Docker images. It's gonna push them up there. And long and short of it is um, you know, after the images have been created, it's going to go ahead and uh, the cluster itself, it's gonna run commands on the cluster itself to pull down the new image and change its deployment to be the latest and greatest one that we just pushed up there. So I'm gonna pause and let this finish. Okay, it just finished, it took a few minutes, but as you can see, it's green right now. So again, Travis CI is much like uh, um, Jenkins is, but think of it as like a, as an online service right there. But as you can see, it actually went through all of the given um, steps that we need. I'm not gonna go through any of the details here, um, but you'll rest assured if you take the course, you'll see all the details here. Um, one of the key things um, is uh, when we do the deploy itself, um, we've got a deploy script that he'll actually walk you through on building the images, as well as um, you know other scripts here for issuing the certificates um, through Let's Encrypt. Um, so these are all installed via Helm inside of your Kubernetes cluster. So he'll actually walk you through that. Um, now that we actually have this deployed, um, it takes a little bit of refreshing here. I've noticed with the the browser here, sometimes you actually have to refresh. So let me just um, close this down or let's give it a shot here. There we go. As you can see, it just went ahead and changed that to change this. So long and short of it is I just demonstrated um, what his course will teach you and it's using HTTPS certificates as you can see here, which is another added bonus. Um, I think that's about it. I, I can't recommend this course enough if you really want to get a good grasp on uh, Docker and Kubernetes. Um, it will require you to open up a uh, Google Cloud account. It will require you to have a, a AWS account if you want. Um, if you choose not to do those two, I guess you could just uh, run it locally um, just by using Minikube and Docker. And you can use the free Docker Hub and your free GitHub repo and the uh, the free Travis thing. Um, but other than that, um, a very good journey into Docker Kubernetes. It's definitely worth looking into. And thank you very much for watching this. And I hope you have a great one. Take care. Bye-bye.